Welcome to the troubleshooting episode of the series on the Active Directory project. This video is here to hopefully help you with some errors that you might encounter during the project. We'll start off with installing Windows Server. If you're installing the server and do not check the skip unintended installation, you may come across an error saying that Windows cannot find the Microsoft software license terms. In order to fix this, you must check skip unintended installation. If you notice that your Windows server is not sending any data over to the Splunk server, make sure that they can communicate by simply opening up command prompt and pinging the Splunk server, which in my case is located in 192.168.10.10. And if there's no communication, double check your network and IP. If they can communicate and data is not flowing, Make sure you're using the inputs.com file that looks like this, which you can download on my GitHub and I'll leave it in the description down below. Once you have your inputs.com file, do also make sure that you restart the service. The one that we're interested in is the Splunk forwarder service. Also do make sure that the account is local system. So if we were to double click it, go into logon, we wanna make sure that it is using local system account and not the NT service Splunk account. We want the local system account. Next is the Windows target machine. If you're having difficulties joining to the domain that you have created, you want to make sure that you're typing in the full domain name, including the top level domain. As you can see, I am using mydfir.local and not mydfir. Secondly, double check your network connectivity. Again, you can do this by right-clicking the network icon, click on open network and internet settings, change adapter options, and right click the interface. We want to make sure that under IPv4 or internet protocol version four, the DNS is pointing to our domain controller. In my case, it is 192.168.10.7. If your domain controller is on a different IP, make sure it is pointing to that IP. If for whatever reason, your network adapter is not generating a DHCP address for you, so let's just say that you have obtained an IP address and you're not using a static IP. And when you're using a DHCP address, you're not getting an address assigned. If that happens to you, you want to manually set a static IP and then try it again. VirtualBox does act a bit weird sometimes when DHCP fails and it won't assign an address for some reason, but setting a static IP should be okay. And of course, similar to Windows Server, if you do not see any logs being forwarded over to Splunk, make sure you're using the same inputs.com file and double check the username for the Splunk Universal Forwarder. We want to make sure it is local system account. And of course, restart the service. Next is our Splunk server. So if you have everything set up correctly, but you're not getting any data for some reason, it could be because you did not create the endpoint index. To do that, again, you want to select settings, head over to indexes, and just scroll down and see if you have the index endpoint. In my case, I do right here. If this is missing for you, you want to create it by clicking on new index. Secondly, if it is there and you're still not getting data, you might not have the receiving set up. So click on settings, forwarding, and receiving. And at the bottom, you want to click on configure receiving. And you wanna make sure that your Splunk server is listening on port 9997. If you do not see 9997 here, you want to create a new receiving port and put in 9997. And if all else fails, try restarting the server because it could be due to your computer specifications. In the example of part five of the series where we created a local account using Atomic Red Team, we didn't see the event right away. Instead, we did see it couple minutes later. So that might be the same case for you. Next up is Kali Linux. Now there isn't much here, but do make sure that you update and upgrade your repositories before trying to install Crowbar. You want to also enable remote desktop protocol on your target machines, which also includes your domain controller if you want. If you do not enable RDP, Windows events will not be generating any failed attempts from Crowbar. To follow the example in part five, do make sure that your password is listed under the file passwords.txt. The password that I used for Terry Smith was the last entry over here, which is password one with an exclamation mark. If your password is different and you wanna follow along, 
make sure that you input your password into this file. So for example, if your password was example123 exclamation mark, then you will hit control X, Y to save it out and hit enter. And then you'll run your crowbar against that. Those are some of the errors that I've personally encountered in the past. And I hope that this video helps you if you encounter the same errors. Now, if you do have some that I did not mention, please leave them down below and we'll try and work through it together. That is it for the video and I hope that you have enjoyed this series. Remember to stay curious and do things differently.